is not the longest race, nor perhaps the richest, but none is tougher and certainly none is older than the Southern 500 because the Darlington Raceway was the very first of the super speedways built for stock cars here in America. And virtually every great driver has been around this mile and three-eighths circuit. In fact, most of the drivers will tell you that this is absolutely the toughest place to win. And you can bet the man who wins today has really done a full day's work. Working with us also is Chris Akatamaki, editor of the National Speed Sport News. And right now he'll observe another of the important pre-race activities. Chris? Thanks, Bill. All 40 drivers in today's Southern 500 are behind me for the pre-race drivers meeting being conducted by Chief Steward Johnny Bruner. A word about the rules of the race, a word about safety, and something for the rookies. Let's listen in. We got to start this race the like we always start them. Two abreast, the way they're lined up here, that's the way you come across that starting line. Any, anybody that comes across that starting line any other way is going to get in trouble. If you don't, I'll be waiting for you with a black flag next time you come around. If I miss you that lap, I'll stay at that till I get you. Now, when the caution flag, when the caution car comes out, once you receive that flag up here, I want the leader the next time around to be running not over 60 miles an hour when he comes down here so we can put the caution car out in front of him. We don't want to send the caution car out a half a lap ahead of you to make you stop. So let's play it, let's play it right. And one more thing while we're on that, some of you hot dogs have been taking advantage of this, and I'm going to start getting into your pocketbooks. Safety is an important the factor at all NASCAR races, and the rules are always reviewed before each event. And then there's many rookies in here, too. doesn't mean that you hot dogs can go on and leave him before the flag drops. Now, if I see anybody in front of one of those slow cars before that flag drops, it's going to cost you. If you. That second you save is not going to help you a damn bit, because if you can't pass the slow car alongside you after the flag drops, you sure as hell got no business passing it before he drops. I'm looking at all of you hot dogs. <laughs> as far as this race is concerned today, all I need to do is give you one statistic. The qualifying speed was 151.985 miles per hour. It was just 20 years ago that Johnny Mance in a Plymouth won this race at the average speed of 76 miles an hour. It shows you how far we've come in stock car racing in the last two decades. We'll be back for the start of the race in just a moment. Speed behind the pace car. Cale Yarborough, Buddy Baker in the first row. Donnie Allison, Leroy Yarborough in the second. David Pearson, Richard Petty in the third. Charlie Glotzbach, Richard Brickhouse in the fourth. Bobby Allison, Johnny Sears, Richard Brooks, James Hilton, Bobby Johns, Buddy Young, Hoss Ellington, Elmo Langley, and here they come. The pace car is off. The green flag is out. And there goes Cale Yarborough shooting into the lead with tremendous acceleration into that dangerous first turn. Buddy Baker right behind him. Buddy Baker, Donnie Allison, Leroy Yarborough, Richard Petty. What a tremendous blazing start for Cale Yarborough as they go down the back stretch. Into the third turn. And here comes Cale Yarborough with a sizable lead, almost a miraculous lead in the first lap. And a car is in trouble. The yellow caution flag is out early in the race. Car it, number 19, Chris. Henley Gray, and it didn't take him long to have trouble. A tough break for the driver from Rome, Georgia. And here comes Leroy Yarborough trying to get by Donnie Allison before he gets the yellow flag. If he does, he'll be in third place, and he just does make it. And he's in third. Well, earlier, Chris Okonomaki talked to these men with similar names, but who are not related. Two of the fastest drivers in stock car racing are also two of the best dressed. Cale Yarborough on my left and Leroy Yarborough on my right. Cale, you were the biggest money winner last year. Is this what you spent some of the money on, this outfit? Well, it sure is, Chris. Uh, looks like I may have to uh, slip a little bit. Leroy's outdressed me just a little bit, but he's winning more money than I am this year. Well, it looks as though Leroy hasn't been to the barber in a while. You look mighty good, Leroy. You look like Rhett Butler out of Gone with the Wood. How long has it been since you've been to the barber? Well, I went last week. I just didn't let him uh, cut too much off this time. Okay, Leroy, quickly, what kind of race are we going to see from you today? This won't be a wait-and-see game. It'll be just whoever's leading at the time it starts raining today. You share those views, Cale? I sure do. I think it'll be a trophy dash for the rain. There you have it from the two yard bros. And unfortunately, the rain is coming down. The umbrellas are popping out here, and all it takes is just a little bit of rain to make this track extremely slick and, of course, very dangerous. So the cars now are getting the red flag. They'll be lined up in the order in which they were before the rain started during that caution, and it'll have to be started again from this point. So we'll be back with more of the Southern 500 in a moment. Well, let's 
Good news now. The cars are back out on the track. The rain has stopped, and they're following the caution car, but the green flag will be out for them, and they're restarting in the positions in which the cars were stopped. So that means that Cale Yarborough, Buddy Baker, Leroy Yarborough, Donnie Allison, and behind him, Richard Petty. The green flag is out. And again, Cale Yarborough spurts out in front, and Richard Petty makes his move on the outside near the wall, and he gets by Donnie Allison and is challenging Leroy Yarborough for third. Yarborough's car works well on the low side on this track. It's one of the few that does, Bill. The amazing thing about it is the acceleration that Cale Yarborough seems to have as he zoomed out in front of Buddy Baker by at least another three car lanes. Again, the battle for third. The blue car high at the lower three is... Richard Petty and down low on the white is Leroy Yarborough. And here are the first two, Cale Yarborough, Buddy Baker, and Leroy moving up. We've got a Mercury leading a Dodge second and three Ford Talladegas right behind. And now Leroy seems to pull ahead of Richard Petty fighting off that challenge and he himself now is going to try to make a move on Buddy Baker to try to get into second place. Already we've had one caution flag and one red flag early in the start of the Southern 500. There still is a threat of rain in the sky, but right now the track is dry and there is no rain coming down. A blistering pace set by Cale Yarborough and Richard Petty now is passed by Donnie Allison. So Allison moves back into fourth. 149 miles an hour, very close to that speed, set by Cale Yarborough in the early running here. Allison's shown great improvement this year, Bill, and Banjo Matthews, number 27 Ford. He wants to win today. And here is Leroy Yarborough getting alongside of Buddy Baker. Allison right behind them. The pit side, 33-3. That converts to just about 148 miles an hour for Cale Yarborough, the leader. Now the pass goes as Leroy Yarborough goes into second ahead of Buddy Baker. Donnie Allison is third. Richard Petty is fourth. So it means now that Leroy Yarborough and Cale Yarborough, who have battled so many times in the speedways here in America, are battling it out once again, and incidentally, both using the same Boss 429 Ford engine. It's a great engine. It puts out almost 625 horsepower and 429 cubic inches. It is undefeated in super speedway competition since its winning debut in Atlanta earlier this year, which we saw on Wide World of Sport. How many times, Chris, have we seen these two fellows battle it out? They really have a lot of respect for one another, Bill, to drive so close at such great speed. Talk about close. Look at this. Almost alongside as Leroy comes up. And we have a spin. Car number eight, Edna Cree, is hit by Bobby Johns in another car. That's 08, uh, Chris, uh, on the left. And the yellow caution flag is up. That's E.J. Trevett, uh, Bill. And uh, it looks like the drivers are OK. That smoke there is coming from the tires burning that was locked up. All right, that means we're going to have a rash of pit stops here under the yellow, so Chris, get on down there, and we'll cover those. And we'll try to get a look at that crash in slow motion. First of all, just a look from the chopper. You see the skid marks. The third car, Bobby Johns, is not there, but E.J. Trevett in 08 is the one in the foreground. And Ed Negree was in the blue number eight. Here it is again. There is Negree. He's hit by Trevett, and then Bobby Johns goes through the middle there. He hit him also. And Johns continues, but it looks like his car is out of the race, and these two will also be. So now let's go to the pit area and Chris Economaki. Cale Yarbrough is coming in for one of his pit stops. Leroy Yarbrough has just gone by, and here's Cale now as the Wood Brothers go to work. Attention is given the windshield. Cale gets a drink of water as the right side of the car goes up. We have a dramatic situation here with both of the leaders in the pits at the same time. The question, of course, who will be first out? And now, there goes number 21 out of the pits and down towards the number 98 pit. Back to you, Bill. All right, and we can get a good view here as Kale slides by Leroy and gets out first. A fantastic pit stop by Kale, only 16 seconds. So we'll be back with more of the Southern 500 from this track that's not symmetrical in Darlington, South Carolina, in just a moment. We've had an unusually large number of yellow caution flags during the early running of the Southern 500, but right now, the green is out. And it is still Cale Yarborough followed by Leroy Yarborough. Donnie Allison is in third. And David Pearson has moved up into fourth. Buddy Baker is fifth. What's the story on Richard Petty, Chris? Uh, he was in the pits with some problems under the hood. I don't know exactly what it was, but he's down a lap or more now. So that comes as a blow to all the Richard Petty fans. But right now, Cale Yarborough, who was born and raised not very far from this track at Timmonsville, South Carolina, is leading the race. In fact, it was just a little fella at the age of 12 who came over to this track 
many years ago to try to get a ride in one of these great stock cars. Climb the fence, too. Incidentally, speaking of leaders, uh, Bill, James Hilton and Dave Marcus. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Chris. Here is Richard Petty in a spin. He hit the guardrail on the number one turn. And he whacks the inside guardrail on the right side of his car. And it may be curtains for the afternoon for Richard Petty, one of the free race favorites. I don't know whether he lost it up there. Chris, that may be a point. Maybe he was having handling problems going in. Could very well be. He's certainly been in a bad year since moving over with Ford. Well, the car's moving anyway. If he can get back in, he will, believe me. He's a real competitor, and his crew will be standing by ready to work on the car. And he's down on the inside, and there is no yellow caution, and they're still racing head-in-head head with Cale Yarborough and Leroy Yarborough. So it's been a very unusual early going in the Southern 500. And now let's watch this pit stop and see what happens. Undoubtedly, they're going to have to do some major work on the right side because he really banged into that inside retaining wall and also the outside. It looks as though his front end may need attention, Bill. Everybody swarming around the car as we turn our attention back momentarily to that race for first place between Kale and Leroy. But there is the petty car, and the alignment car is out. That's Maurice Petty, his brother, uh, looking rather dejected at the uh, pigeon-toed angle of the front wheels on number 43. And Richard doesn't look overly happy. And now there is Leroy down low, and he goes by Cale Yarborough. A daring maneuver in that dangerous first turn. He got James Hilton sandwiched in between and did something that people said couldn't be done. Well, Cale Yarborough on his home track has just been snookered by Leroy Yarborough. Like he made that track about 20 feet wider all of a sudden. I don't think I've ever seen him three abreast down there, Chris. I never have myself. Leroy is really going this year. And Donnie Allison in third. Here comes a car smoking. Doesn't even come to the pits. Goes right to the garage. That is car 07, I believe. We'll check on that. Can't quite see him. But fortunately, uh, apparently there's no oil on the track with that blown engine. And there's still, now we've got a, a yellow, but they say it's because of rain. That's right, that was Cuckoo Marlin, and it is, has started to rain again, Bill. It's raining very hard in the number three turn, and as we look over there, the clouds are rather dark. It looks like it may be kind of a bad one, Chris. Oh, got it. It was really pouring it on there. A great race between Kale and Leroy. Here comes uh, Kale in. Leroy pitted first. Another one of those exciting pit stops. They all want to make their pit stops now before the race is stopped, if it's going to be stopped, because they cannot touch the cars once the red flag is out there lined up on the straight. So the situation is reversed. Earlier, it was Kale in first. Now it's Leroy, and Leroy gets out first. Followed very closely by Kale Yarbrough. The rain isn't coming down bad enough to call a temporary halt as yet, but the clouds do look very ominous. Chris, it looks very dark out there in that direction. We've been lucky here at Darlington. It's been 15 years, I believe, since the race has been interrupted by rain. It'll be a disappointed crowd here, but they're battening down the hatches, and it does look like uh, we're going to have stoppage here very very shortly they cannot race out there if there is really any kind of water that's accumulated that's right bill we've got 10 cars out of the race at this point uh cuckoo mile when we saw a go out a little there's bit the ago. red uh, chris they're calling him in well, excuse me i didn't mean to interrupt you but i wanted to call attention to the fact that they are lining the cars up the way they were on the track not necessarily the order in which they are running in the race leroy yarborough is in first place kale is second donnie allison third david pearson is in fourth place, so the red is out. And uh, from the looks of things, this is going to be more than just that show. And we don't, we're not at halfway yet either, Bill. It's not a race. Uh, that's a very important point. So it looks like we're going to be delayed for some time, and we will be back with more of the Southern 500 to give you a report. But right now, ABC's Wide World of Sports journeys to its 33rd country in our eight years, and we cover an international event with our colleague Jim McKay in Copenhagen, Denmark. And this tremendous crowd here at the Darlington Raceway now anticipating the restart of this race after a lengthy delay because of rain. The green flag is in sight. The track has been dried out, and it looks like we're going to have the restart, Chris. 30 cars remain. The drivers drove for about 20 laps under the yellow, and it's their decision that it's ready for racing. And the green is out, and we're back underway once again with Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison battling for the lead. Buddy Baker in third, Leroy Yarbrough is in fourth. Part of a 21 is Cale Yarbrough. There's Allison right behind him. And as you can see, they've got some slower cars ahead of them, but those are the two who are battling it out of there practically side by side. 
Allison 27, Yarborough 21. Allison's trying to make the most of the traffic. Now, when we left you, Leroy Yarborough was in the lead, and they were under the yellow for that length of time. And we might mention that uh, Leroy did pit to get a full tank of gas when he thought that the green was imminent. Now Yarborough squeezes off Allison and Buddy Baker's right behind them. Those first three cars are the lead cars at this moment. All day long, Bill, the race has been just a few yards apart between the first and second place men. And Leroy Yarborough is moving up. He is behind Baker for fourth, but he's a considerable distance back there. Uh-oh, uh, Yarborough is in trouble. He hits the retainer wall, goes into a skid. Baker behind him. Allison spinning two. And Baker hits Yarborough, and now a wild melee on the track, and there goes Leroy through. Charlie Glassback has hit the inside wall. But Kale is up against the retaining wall on the inside, and it looks like he is finished for the day. Out of the car he comes. He wouldn't get out, Bill, unless he knew it was over for him. Now the yellow is out. That smoking is caused by the fender rubbing against the left rear tire of Glatzbeck. Well, that happened so fast, and it's hard to know exactly what happened, but Yarbrough got out of shape. It looked like perhaps Allison ticked him, and then uh, the drivers did really a tremendous job Job uh, there was Leroy. Through. Right, Leroy didn't get scathed. In fact, Leroy is in the lead right now. And here he, uh, this is Glotzbach coming into the pits. Leroy goes by, and Allison is in second place, still running. And now we'll see a fine pit crew at work, Paul Goldsmith's uh, pit crew for Charlie Glotzbach, trying to get the damage repaired so he can continue in the race. Now the normal body shop would take about three weeks to fix this. Charlie seems calm. And all Charlie can do is just sit there and patiently wait while they Get the pruning shears out. Incidentally, the NASCAR officials are right there on the spot. We'll not let that car go out if there's anything wrong with it. And here is uh, Buddy Baker in. His whole left side is creamed. Cotton Owens and his crew will take care. He's got some front end damage on that number six Dodge, too. Well, Kale's out of it, that's for sure. Uh, try to get a look at this in slow motion. Their white car, number 21, that's Kale. Now, yep, he does get hit right there, Chris. Allison's moved into his left rear corner. Bobble, and then Kale spins. Now, let's watch here. He's hit by Baker. Now Alli watch, uh, isn't this Leroy right down low, right, the white right, car? Allison's spinning down the track in front of him with the right side of the car torn away, but Leroy miraculously weaves his way through. And there is Kale going into the inside retainer as Glutz back in the white car also gets out. Well, it's amazing, and in that melee, only one car is out of the race. That is Kale Yarborough. Now they're putting the oil absorbing material on the track. We have the yellow flag out, so we're going to have to pause here. And now let's return to Jim McKay in Copenhagen, Denmark. Well, thank you, Jim. Along with me is Chris Economaki. And Chris, it's been a long afternoon here with the darkness now starting to close in because of all that rain. I know we're not going to get 500 miles in. What's the situation? Well, Bill, they decided to let the drivers know 30 laps before they're going to call it off through a signal from the flag man. We know because of the impending darkness that it cannot go the full distance. All right, we're back under the green once again with Leroy Yarbrough, David Pearson, Bobby Allison now has moved into third, and Buddy Baker is fourth. And the battle right here is between Leroy Yarbrough in the lead and David Pearson right behind him. An interesting point here, Pearson is the leader in the Grand National Point Championship standing. But Leroy is the leading money winner. Both of these drivers have former drivers as crew chiefs. Leroy's crew chief is Junior Johnson, and David's is uh, Dick Hutcherson. As they come by here, we're trying to pick up the other cars. There's a pretty good battle going on between the Allison boys, Bobby and Donnie, for third. Uh, there they are right there. There is Bobby ahead in car number 22, and Donnie right behind him. They've passed Baker, so this is the battle for third place. It's a brother act there, and uh, one's driving a Dodge and the other a Ford. And now with the slower car moving over, you can see that there isn't really any brotherly love when it comes to racing. That was Richard Petty uh, being a real sport. He's way down in the standing. And there is Bobby Allison in the spin, and he is hit by Donnie. Bobby goes down and escapes any further hitting. And he's got parts of his car hanging out there. 
the right uh, front corner of Donnie's car is pretty well banged up, too. Tough break for the Allison brothers. All right, here comes Donnie. Look at the right side of his, all pruned up. And Bobby also coming in. The yellow is out. So that means that Baker will move back into third with Leroy battling it out with David Pearson for the lead. We'll be back with more of the Southern 500 in just a moment. Thanks, Chris. We'll be looking forward to that SMU Air Force game tonight under the lights of the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Now, Leroy Yarborough, Buddy Baker, and David Pearson all on the same lap. And it is Leroy setting a pretty good pace, but now look at Pearson moving in behind Baker. And it looks like Pearson is going to take Baker. He does. He slides on by. So that means that Pearson is closing past on Leroy. Pearson, the national champion, is an unspectacular driver, Bill. He never seems to uh, make much of a commotion during a race until it gets near the end, and he's making his move now. So at this point in the race, we know that we will not have a full 500 miles, Chris. Uh, the official said that they're going to give the drivers, oops, there's trouble on the track. Right, and it is James Hilton in the Dodge Charger, car number 48, apparently a blown engine. The yellow lights are out. And he goes down on the infield. There's oil on the track up there. Now, the leaders have not come around yet, so they still officially have not taken the flag. Here is Pearson, ooh, weaving just a bit. And he goes down low and takes Leroy. Takes him before he gets to the yellow flag, and that's legal. That's right, the yellow flag is uh, official, but the yellow light is advisory. I think Leroy got a little bit of Hilton's oil there. So the yellow is now out. That means that Leroy cannot move up until the green goes out, so David Pearson is the leader of note at this point. And with the, the shortened race in prospect, and if they don't get this track cleared off, it could uh, make a very interesting finish. Anyway, here come the cars into the pit area. Notice Leroy's front bumper a bit damaged as he calls the Junior Johnson pit. Tough break for, Dave, for James Hilton, who's out of the race with a blown engine. He led at one time early in the race. That's right, during the pit stops, he was in for one lap. So now we come down to the real tense part of this rain-delayed Southern 500. How many laps do we have to run, and will they be able to get all the oil off the track before the end of the race? So we'll be back with more of the Southern 500 in just a moment from the Darlington Raceway. David Pearson, Leroy Yarborough, and Buddy Baker are all in the same lap right now as the cars are coming down to the end of the rain-shortened Southern 500. It's gonna go 316 miles, Bill, and then the checker will come out. So David Pearson trying to hang on for these last few miles over Leroy Yarbrough. It's been an exciting day, but not as exhausting as most of these races are because the drivers have had a long wait to kind of rest up between rain showers. And then after they've raced for a while, the yellow flag has come up to make it a little bit easier for them. That's the reason I believe, Chris, that they're charging so hard here at the end of the race. We've been clocking them consistently at 150 miles an hour. That's right, but the race speed is only about 105. And look at Leroy. Leroy on the inside, and he does it again, as he's done this afternoon, getting by low on that first turn. That's remarkable. The first turn was said to be the trouble spot, and he's passed consistently on the inside in a very tricky section of the raceway. That's Charlie Glotzbeck running in the number three position, but he is not third in the race. It's just that spot on the track. He's lost. He's a lap down. And he's matching the leader's speed, though. That's remarkable for a car that's been deaded and therefore not aerodynamically clean. Well, I think all those cars, save Pearson's, has uh, had a few dents that he put in there this afternoon. It's been a rough race, Bill. More like a demolition derby when you look at some of the cars out there. Buddy Baker still running third. Leroy, David Pearson, and Baker are on the same lap, and here comes a car by a blown engine, some sparks out from underneath, number four. That's John Sears, Bill, a regular on the circuit. But no yellow, and here is Pearson getting by Leroy. And on the inside, too. He apparently decided to try Leroy's groove. And Dick Hutchison, the crew chief, very happy about that, and the sign goes up, think one. Uh, use your noggin, they mean. Think fast, I think is what they mean. Two laps to go, and David Pearson has the lead over Leroy Yarbrough, which should be a blazing finish here. D uh, David's a rather unspectacular driver, Bill. He never seems to come to much attention until near the end of a race. And here he is out front now with just a little bit to go. 
All right, when they come by here this time, it'll be one lap to go. The white flag is out. Don't discount Leroy. And here he comes, closing in on Pearson. One lap to go on a mile and three eighths, and everybody cheering here, trying to spur on their favorite to win this race. You get the boys in the pits excited. It's some automobile race. All eyes riveted now on these two cars. That's where the battle is for this Southern 500, which will be today the Southern 316. And here goes Leroy Bastin. He got him. On the inside, going into turn three. Now watch Pearson. And Leroy just shut him out at that moment. And Dick Hutchison, a former driver himself, knows now that it looks impossible to get by. Coming down the straightaway with Leroy's acceleration, he takes it to the flag exciting finishes in all of Stock Car Racing for his sixth major super speedway victory of the year. What a record this boy Leroy Yarbrough is establishing this season. And Junior Johnson being hugged there by all the members of the crew. So that's the official finish. Leroy Yarbrough, David Pearson, Buddy Baker, and Donnie Allison, the first four. Incidentally, Leroy now, according to our calculations, is up around $165,000 for a single year, winning $21,000 and uh, some extras today. That that's, makes him uh, really up there, doesn't it? That's a record for the NASCAR circuit, Bill. Okay, and that means that uh, David Pearson, by finishing second, wins a little over 10000 and retains his leadership in the Grand National Championship point stand. All in all, a very exciting day. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed what proved to be a most unusual Southern 500. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Coordinating producer, Jim Spence. Today's program was produced by Doug Wilson. World Water Skiing, directed by Lou Volpicelli. Southern 500, directed by Lester Becker. Associate directors, Lou Frederick and Roger Goodman. Remember tonight here on ABC, our first NCAA football telecast of the year, Air Force versus SMU live and in color from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas beginning at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the first live telecast of a Grand Prix race in North America, the Canadian Grand Prix from Mosport, Ontario. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Now this is Bill Fleming along with Chris Economaki saying so long from the Southern 500, Hoping you've enjoyed today's wide world of sports from Darlington, South Carolina and Copenhagen, Denmark. Air travel arrangements for ABC's wide world of sports made through United Airlines who also furnish promotional consideration. Today's program was pre-recorded.